Rise and damp, something any homeowner doesn't want to hear about. You certainly don't want to find it because if you get the professionals in, it can cost you a fortune. But I've been in touch with a company called Safeguard and they've got a dry zone system which is very simple to use and any DIYer could have a go at it. This is an internal wall, it's a solid brick wall in a 1930s property. Um, as you can see, the plaster has started to soak up water, the paint's flaking, I've got salt coming through. So the only thing I can put it down to is rising damp. There's no outside elements getting in, it's got to be coming from the ground up. So I need to put it right. The good people at Safeguard have kindly sent me out all this. They've sent me the fitting kit, which comprises of a 12mm bit. This one's an SDS one. There's a hole clearing out tool. So if you look at the end of that, it's half moon to clear out the holes. And then there's this cutter for cutting the dry rods. Then they've sent me enough dry rods to do my project. They've sent me the SBR bonding, a liquid damp proof membrane, and then the damp resistant plaster to replaster the wall when I've done the treatment. This is all available from Amazon. So I'll leave an affiliate link in the description below. With us living in the property while I'm doing the work, I'm going to sort of build a, a tent around it to try and contain the dust as much as possible. Um, obviously I'm going to wear a respirator and eye protection because I've got to, well, first of all, take off the skating boards. I've got to chisel off all the plaster. So where the damp is, they recommend 300 mil above where you can see it for a meter. So that's going to create a lot of dust. I'm going to use the SDS to chisel it off because that's the easiest thing to use. So when I've done that, I can put the rod, drill the holes and put the rods in. And on this data sheet, it shows the different steps that you've got to go through. So you put your dry rods in and then the damp proof membrane gets painted on, on the bottom of the wall and on the floor. Then you have your dry zone damp plaster or damp resistant plaster, one coat and then a second coat. Then probably a skim coat of multi finish or something. Then an emulsion paint. Now they recommend their own mold resistant emulsion paint. So there's nothing left now to do but to start hacking off the plaster. So this is the tent I built around the area. It's just a plastic dust sheet. A bit of masking tape just to try and contain the dust as much as possible. Respirator is a must. This one by Trend is brilliant and of course safety glasses. So that's the top of the, the damp. So 300 millimeters above that. Just strike a rough line along the wall and away I go with the SDS hacking off the plaster. Now this is a messy dusty job but it is a simple job and this plaster did fall off quite easy. Give it a good brush down, get rid of all the dust. So I've set the depth off on my drill and I'm drilling through the single course of brick almost to the other side. Now because this isn't a cavity wall, I can just do it from one side. If it was a cavity wall, I'd have to go from both sides. So I'm just drilling the holes 120 mil apart, 120 mil centers. Here's the dust removal tool, put it in, turn it over and scoop out the dust, clears the holes great. So here's the rods out the packet, now they are a bit wet so suitable gloves are recommended. Measure them to length and then use the cutter, a bit like a cigar cutter, just simply cut them to length, really easy. Then push them in the hole and until they're about five mil behind the face of the brick. So now I'm taking up the parquet flooring blocks just to expose a bit of the concrete floor. Give it a good vacuum out, try and get rid of as much dust as you can. 
dampen it down a little bit with clean water. And this is the liquid damp proof membrane. Now it is a bit watery but give it a good stir and it does thicken up a little bit. So I'm giving it a nice even coat of paint, not too thick. We're trying to cover every single little nook and cranny. So when the first coats touch dry after about an hour, a second coat is applied going the opposite way to the first, so at right angles to the first coat, just to try and fill any voids that you might have missed, but not more than 24 hours after the first coat is applied. This is the SBR bond to prime the brickwork to bond to the plaster. Now it was quite watery this, but it said I had one part SBR to two parts water, so that's what I did. Just followed the instructions, give it a good mix in an old milk tub, put it in a paint kettle, and then paint it on the wall. Give it a good even coat. It is very watery, so it will make a mess. So the instructions say to add five litres of water and a full bag of dry zone damp resistant plaster. Now wear your respirator for this because it is a very dusty plaster. And slowly mix it up with an electric mixer. Now I found with the five litres of water it was a bit sloppy. Now I've never done undercoat plastering before I'll admit that but this was very runny. So the next time I mixed it up I used a bit less water and I found that helped a lot. It was a stiffer mix which grabbed the wall better. As you can see for an undercoat plaster this is a bit too thin and watery. But it's done the job, it's stuck to the wall. I missed the only, only the first coat. So for the first coat they recommend between 5 to 10 millimetres thick. The first coat is a scratch coat so it needs scratching up. I didn't have a scratching tool so I just used a small screwdriver and made wavy lines. And this is probably just my OCD but I neatened up the bottom so the plaster didn't have a flick out of the bottom. Makes it easy when you're fitting skating boards. And of course always clean your tools well. So after about three hours it was time to do the second coat. And I used a little bit less than 5 litres of water here for the stiffer mix because this coat is between 10 and 15 millimetres so it made it a bit thicker, a bit stiffer so it wouldn't fall off the wall when it was this thick. So I'm spreading it on so it's a bit proud of the wall above it. And I'll show you why now. So I'm using a six foot straight edge. So this is a spirit level. And I'm using the plaster at the top of the wall as a guide to get this undercoat plaster nice and flat with it. Now I'm going to re-skim the whole wall. So I want this flush to the other plaster. So if you were just going to skim the bottom bit, you'd want it just a little bit behind the original plaster. And I'm just giving it a little smooth out just to get rid of some of them lines left by the spirit level. And just neaten up by the architrave. After leaving the damp resistant plaster to dry, 24 hours it's time to do the whole wall. Now I've scrim taped any cracks and the joint between the old and new plaster. A little bit of the SBR bond to, to bond the old plaster to the new. 
and I'm just using a very very thin skin of multi finish plaster so the thickness of this is maybe one to two mil no more than that so I've always been taught to do plaster in two coats so again this is one maybe two mil thick so the whole two coats of the plaster is only one to two mil thick now I'm not a professional plasterer, I'm just a DIYer, but I can get a fairly good finish that I'm happy with. So that's the damp wall sorted. I've plastered it, I've painted it, I've put it back together. I've just got to finish off the skating board and do something with the floor now. So the product seems great and it was very DIY friendly. I reckon anyone could do that themselves. Apart from maybe the plastering, now if you're going to do it yourself you might want to hire in a, a plasterer but it'll still end up cheaper than getting someone in to do the whole process for you. So great product, thanks to DryZone for sending it to me and I can highly recommend it. So thanks for watching, if you enjoyed the video please hit the like button and if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.